Hi, this is Kerry Dennery of the MathWorks. So we're going to come back to the first model we looked at. It's the uh, complete um, closed loop control harness for the refrigeration system with the uh, condenser model uh, that Aaron created, as well as the uh, other components for the evaporator and the compressor. Um, we finished the last uh, video talking about closing the loop and getting rid of all these reservoirs for idealizing, I'd say, the entry and exit points for each of these pieces of equipment. And that with this closed loop, just like the, the refrigerator in my house, you know, there is no reservoir that's serving a refrigerant as well as a reservoir that's receiving the output. You know, it is a closed loop. So we have it now, and we talked a fair bit about the idea of, um, you know, the expansion from this point, point four, or it's, uh, it's actually point three, to point four that takes place. And it's a controlled expansion right there. You can see the controller right there. It's a PI controller, right, defined by its proportional and integral gains. And um, its job is essentially to make the difference between what's measured. Um, okay, actually, we should talk a little bit about this because this is kind of cool the way this really works, all right? And I want you to really just kind of notice this point right here, just downstream of the evaporator, and this point right here, which is assessing essentially the, um, the, the uh, well, let me put it this way. Okay, the evaporators, you know, and we see that path right here, is nearly constant temperature. Okay, uh, and that's because you're operating mostly in the um, underneath the thermodynamic dome, and so it's this you know uh, vapor liquid equilibrium that's characterized by the boiling temperature, right? And and so uh, essentially for this fluid coming into the evaporator, we're measuring that temperature. TV, the vapor, and TL will be the same because essentially these are horizontal lines uh, for constant temperature during boiling, and uh, and so we measure that. We measure the temperature just downstream of the evaporator, right? And we compare this, right? And we get that difference. And uh, this is kind of interesting. And this is, we talked a little bit about kind of the point on the left being defined as, I think it's like eight degrees subcooling. Well, what we've really done here in establishing control is we've created a set point that will be five degrees to the right of the, I call it the boundary of the dome. And uh, just again, to kind of remind you of this really great comment that, that Aaron gave me was that the evaporator needs to take the refrigerant into a superheated condition because you can't be putting boiling water through your compressor. Okay, so a really kind of cool control strategy right there, um, kind of enabled by these two measurements and that, that PI controller. Now, the other one's really kind of the, the you know, this I'd say is almost like an inner loop. It's an inside kind of controller for whoever's creating this essentially refrigeration cycle. The one over here is really you're interfacing with your customer. You know, the, the refrigerant's job is to make something colder, right? And, and so I'm calling the customer really this heat load right here, right? And, and so we're getting that measurement of temperature right there. And you'll see it kind of matches up with the go-to statements right there. And, and this, again, it's a pretty simple controller. There's a little bit of a lag, and then it's a PI controller, and then a little bit more lag. And it's really there to essentially set the rotation rate of the compressor, right? And so the basic idea is if things get hot, you know, and that that temperature really goes way above what we would like it to be, it's going to operate the compressor at a much higher rate and essentially increase the rate of flow through that cycle. So that's our controls. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier in one of the other videos that the charging of refrigerant is actually really important, right? And the, the, again, another really great kind of um, uh, conversation with Aaron where he talked about you kind of want to be in the middle somewhere. You want, don't want to be, definitely do not want to be subcooled or superheated. And, and you kind of want to be in the middle and it gives you some kind of room to wiggle, okay? And, um, and so this point, of course, it represents some sort of enthalpy and some sort of pressure. And that's the, the chart we're looking at. You know, and, and, you know, the fact that we can define it with two things like that really indicates that I'll call it the degrees of freedom for defining the state of a fluid really are two, two degrees of freedom, temperature 
pressure could be the pair, enthalpy pressure could be the pair. But if you're in this dome, X can be the pair too, the, the, the vapor quality. And, and because that's the real desired thing to really get right, um, you'll see that the initialization method chosen, which really is choosing your state that you're going to make an assignment for at t equals zero, uh, was vapor quality. And x zero, I think it's somewhere in here, and it's pretty close to 25%. And um, I'll just kind of, I think I'll kind of finish up on that at this point. All right, and I, I think that what we're looking at here on the left is, is you know, Fairly technical, fairly, de fairly detailed. We're seeing the components and we're describing these components in a very technical way. Um, now, part of the big great use of Simulink is the ability to kind of manage and collaborate as well. And so I decided to kind of, you, you can even see this is still called, the file is still called Untitled. And what I did was I just, you know, copied this whole thing and went like Control A and then I went over here and I pasted it in. But once I was over here, I didn't worry so much about ruining the model and in our our project and having to go through all the you know stuff of like submitting the change and all that kind of stuff so even though it does it really well projects are great for that sort of thing um but i just uh, uh took the shortcut okay and i pasted all the same but what i realized was well let's kind of mix this up a, well not mix it up but let's organize it a little bit okay and, and i thought in terms again of like customers or loads and customers or domains, whatever. But I think of, you know, that if somebody makes a refrigeration unit, they're real experts at refrigeration and, and that all their stuff is going to be kind of captured in one of these components. And ultimately, I think that refrigeration units are um, provided by suppliers and they are integrated into other components that are provided by suppliers. So I thought it was a, a reasonable example. Okay, and so the, the expertise of the companies that do this is all this white blue stuff. It's the two phase, you know, refrigerant, you know, vapor liquid equilibrium, you know, management, all that kind of stuff. And even this controller right here, that's really kind of optimizing, you know, the, the point of entry into the evaporator. That's really represents very rich domain knowledge. Okay, so that, that's their expertise and that they're interfacing will be with whatever's cooling it. In this case, there'll be a couple of fans you know, that are blowing air that's got a fair bit of humidity in it. And that's why we use moist air blocks. And that, that all that air passes through this condenser and ultimately returns somewhere, which I simply referred to as the environment, right? And anyways, I think you'll kind of get the idea. Here's our thermal load. That might be my customer who's, who's buying my refrigeration unit so that they can keep their thing the right temperature and that can be expressed by that temperature. So anyways, why don't we just go ahead and run this and we'll just kind of, uh, well, you can see I practiced. So let's run it again and watch, you know, kind of refrigeration unit right there. Watch this. Maybe it's best kind of, I, again, I, I really, you know, it's kind of quick and I put this together, but I really kind of like the look of it. You know, it's really kind of bubbling up to things or are, are, I'd say the, the most important important kind of units that I think we're working with here. And so there's the refrigeration, the air cooling, the environment, and then there's the analysis. And what's happening thermodynamically will show up in this chart. Uh, the thermal load, what's most important to us with regard to it will be its temperature, and we'll see that in that scope right there. So anyways, um, I hope this uh, series of videos will be um, helpful for you. Um, you know, uh, I decided to because I knew there are a number of customers here in the Bay Area where, you know, my office is in Santa Clara, California. And, um, and uh, anyways, we're going to use this probably in some seminar stuff like that. So there's a good chance that if you're watching this, you'll be, you know, um, you and I might meet someday. In, in any ways, I, I felt it was good to kind of get it out there and, and kind of show what can be done, but also show what we can do from our office in Santa Clara, California. We've got great resources in addition to the great tools that are available for us with MATLAB and Simulink. So anyways, thank you very much. Bye-bye.